Good afternoon once again ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to our senior high school virtual immersion and college practicum webinar for this afternoon. So as we formally start our senior high school virtual immersion and practicum webinar for this afternoon, I hope everyone is already set up uh, or already set up their comfortable space so you can focus for this afternoon's webinar. And again, a gently reminder to everybody to please use our chat box for interaction. Kindly mute your microphone to avoid distraction and of course, turn on your camera and apply the virtual background provided. So once again, may I request everyone to please settle down as we formally start our program. To introduce to you our third speaker for this afternoon, who will talk about Anti-Sexual Harassment Act. Our third speaker for this afternoon, she took Bachelor of Science in Social Work at Ateneo de Davao University in the year 1984. A Master of Social Work at the University of the Philippines Open University in the year 2004. A PhD Development Research Administration at the University of South Eastern Philippines in the year 2015. He has the following on an un unpublished manuscript in module titled Social Welfare Agency Administration in the year 2020. A doctoral dissertation titled Modeling the Retirement Decision of Employees Private Higher Educational Institutions in Davao City in the year 2015. Also, an instructional material in field instructional manual, social work practice with individuals, families, and small groups in the year 2013 and 2015. Also, in master of case study report titled Working with Incest Children in the year 2014. A reviewer titled Social Work Board uh, Exam Reviewer in the year 2003, 2009, and 2013. A co-author of instructional material titled Field Instructional Manual, a guide for students in the year 2002. She has been in two different roles in regards with the research work and related activities on the following sponsoring agencies. We have a field enumerator or national research on young adult fertility survey in DR, DRFI, UPPI, and the ADO CLG in the year 2002. A field interviewer or international research in tracking footprints in SOS National Office supported by SOS Kinderdorf Austria in the year 2003. A lead researcher or institutional research in Holy Cross of Davao College at 60. Reflections of the Davao Community in the Holy Cross Davao College in the year 2011. Also, a, a paper presenter or participant in retirement plans and quality of Holy Cross Davao College retirees in fourth international conference on multidisciplinary research by the International Association of Multidisciplinary Research Incorporated in the year 2020, 2015. A research assistant collector in the extent of implementation of GRCM in the social work curriculum in the United Nations Fund for Population Activities in the year 2018. 
a paper presenter in retirees gender difference in their retirement plans and levels of satisfaction of Holy Cross of Davao College in National Education of Social Work Education Incorporated in the year 2018. A paper presenter in experiences of a social worker as a child of family development advocate in children and families by the Children and Youth Wellness Technical Advocacy Center in the year 2019. And a provincial team leader in the World Vision Philippines in the year 2019. She was a former Dean of College of Humanities, Social Sciences and Communication at HCDC from 2014 to 2017, and currently a full-time oh. college instructor of Bachelor of Science in Social Work at yes. HCDC. Ladies and gentlemen, our third speaker, who is a registered social worker and a bo board member of Philippine Association of Social Workers, Davao City Chapter. A warm of applause to Ms. Grace Manolo Castigan. Good afternoon, Ms. Castigan. Good afternoon, Janine, and thank you very much for that generous introduction. So, can I now start my presentation and share my screen? Yes, Ma'am Grace. Go ahead, Ma'am. Thank you. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to greet the management and staff of the JIB International Schools. Uh, I believe there are faculty members here uh, for the senior high school and for the internship program of JIB International Schools and of course the students, the attendees of this webinar. So I'd like to start my presentation by um, telling the students, the, the attendees, that you are, you are so lucky to be born in this generation because there are several laws that are meant to protect you. To protect you. you know, I was born very much ahead of you, and uh, during that time, uh, of course, we experienced some kind of harassment, but since there were no laws that protect us, our tendency was to keep quiet. But then it is interesting to note that despite these laws, uh, there are still uh, cases that we hear you know, about sexual harassment. So I also believe that this is not very new to all of you, but one of the pedagogy of learning, it says that repetition is uh, the way to learn. So for those who are already familiar with this law, uh, you can actually listen and maybe while you are listening, you can see a different angle that will enhance your understanding about sexual harassment. So let's begin with the rationale. Why are we having this? As I've said, it happened no, before the coming up with the law. There was a problem. There was a concern that students might be easily vulnerable as targets of sexual harassment because interns typically lack power in organization and because students may be unaware that they are protected from sexual harassment during their internships by employment law and university policy. So another reason why we are having this activity is that student interns may unintentionally engage in inappropriate or harassing behaviors if they have never been formally educated that those behaviors are not acceptable or acceptable in the workplace. So what are the official and legal basis for this? I'm sure uh, your school will not just 
uh, hold this activity without some kind of official and legal basis. So this is from CHED. CHED stands for Commission on Higher Education Department, CHED Memorandum Order Number 104, Series of 2017. And the subject is about the revised guidelines for student internship program in the Philippines or abbrevi uh, otherwise known as the SIPP. This is for all programs, whether it be in tourism or business, uh, hotel and hospitality management programs, even in medicine or all programs for that matter. So it's a long document, but particularly I called letter J because it is relevant for this activity. And it says, conduct pre-internship orientation training to student interns as prerequisite to their deployment to internship venues and workplace environment issues, including but not limited to proper work, proper work ethics and laws against sexual harassment. Okay, so what will be our objectives for this afternoon sessions? I only have two objectives, objectives for you. First is to explain sexual harassment according to official and legal basis. So therefore, uh, the intended learning outcome for this is that for you to be informed and by the information that you gain from my explanation, you will also be able to explain what sexual harassment is all about. And then number two, to identify the steps in filing sexual harassment complaint. No? Uh, we hope there will be no sexual harassment complaints, but it is important to know the steps. In, it, it, it is better to, to prevent than to treat the problem. So let's begin with this formal definition. This is taken from the law itself. What is sexual harassment? It is an act or a series of acts involving any unwelcome sexual advance, request, or demand for a sexual favor or other verbal or physical behavior of a sexual nature committed by a government employee or official in a work-related training or education-related environment. So I I think it is self-explanatory. You understand very well what is an unwelcome sexual advance. It's a uh, it's a behavior you know, behavior directed towards a person, but that behavior is of sexual nature and is unwelcome. Meaning the person who is. Behavior uncomfortable Bye. of such behavior. So, what is the policy of the state on sexual harassment? The state here meaning our country. Sexual harassment, which has been declared unlawful in the workplace, training, and education environments, will not be tolerated as it violates the dignity and human rights of a person. So it says here, it is not or it will not be tolerated because it is a violation of our inherent dignity and rights as persons. So what is the present law on sexual harassment? So this is Republic Act 77, an act declaring sexual harassment. Um, excuse me for a while. I can hear some noise. Can please mute whoever that person is. Yeah, thank you very much. So let me go back to this uh, slide. Republic Act 7877 is an act declaring sexual harassment unlawful in the employment, education, or training environment, such as, of course, the JIB International Schools, and for other purposes. 
It was approved on February 14th, that's Valentine's Day, no? In 1995 and became effective on March 5, 1995. That's on the same year. So 15 days after publication in the Malaya and Times Journal, February 18, again on the same year. It is known as the Anti-Sexual Harassment Act of 1995. So how many years now? Uh, since it was made as a law. So where can sexual harassment be committed under RA 7877? So I just called section three because that is the relevant answer to the question. Section B, let section three, letter B, in an education or training environment, sexual harassment is committed Number one, against one who is under the care, custody, or supervision of the offender. Okay. So this means it could be a teacher, a supervisor, you know, and uh, who is the offender. And of course, the, the victim or the complainant is the student because it is under the care or custody or it could be a manager and the secretary. So number two, against one whose education, training, apprentice, or tutorship is instruct, entrusted to the offender. So you can see here that sexual harassment is a, uh, is a situation whereby the offender and the one being harassed know each other. So there is some degree of relationship between the offender and the uh, complainant or let's say the the victim so so it, they are not strangers to each other so it happened in perhaps in an environment that they are familiar with such as the workplace the school okay so that is uh, where sexual har harassment can be committed and then it can also be committed when the sexual favor is made the condition to the passing of grade or the granting of honors and scholarship or the payment of a stipend, allowance, and other benefits, privileges, or consideration. Like, like uh, a student who begs, no, his or a, a student who begs her teacher to give her a passing grade. And then the teacher would agree, uh, but with one condition that the student will sleep with her, with him, you know, will sleep with him. So that is uh, made a condition to the passing of a grade or for the employee, employer, employee relationship, like promotion, then the, the, the manager, for instance, would offer a promotion if the the employee will agree that she becomes her girlfriend so these are examples number four when the sexual advances result in an intimidating hostile or offensive environment for the student trainee or apprentice for example in a uh like if students like you will ha be having their internship in a ho a uh, hotel right or in in a restaurant and then the there are several male uh, employees and there are no policies that would um, disallow bullying for instance or nasty words and the female employees there will always be bullied because of their physical appearance like calling them sexy or you look so beautiful today, you smell so good today. So it's kind of an hostile environment because it makes the, uh, this, this statements can make the female employee become uh, intimidated and become anxious in terms of how she will perform her task. By the way, sexual harassment does, does not only happen to female employees. It can also happen to different uh, uh, persons with different sexual orientations. So it is also a gender issue. 
So when is sexual harassment committed in an education or training environment? First, the submission to or rejection of the act or series of acts is used as basis for any decision affecting the complainant, including but not limited to the giving of a grade, the granting of honors or scholarship, the payment of a stipend or allowance, or the giving of any benefit, privilege, or consideration. So I think I have explained this earlier. So another one, number two, the act or series of acts have the purpose or effect of interfering with the performance or creating an intimidating, hostile, or offensive academic environment of the complainant. So when is sexual harassment committed in an education? Oh, yeah, that's the same question. And then this is the, the third uh, answer. The act uh, or series of act might reasonably be expected to cause discrimination, insecurity, discomfort, offense, or humiliation to a complainant who may be a trainee, apprentice, intern, duty, or ward of the person complained of. Any person who directs or induces another to commit any act of sexual harassment as herein defined or who cooperates in the commission thereof by another without which it would not have been committed shall also be held liable under this act this means that if the offender has a friend and the friend does not call the attention of that offender to stop the harassment towards a student or a, an employee so that friend that friend of the offender is also liable there is also a corresponding penalty uh, for that friend of the offender so what is the duty of the employer or head of office in a work-related education or training environment? This is taken uh, in RA 78, yeah, section 4. So it shall be the duty of the employer or the head of the work-related educational or training environment or institution to prevent or deter the commission of any sexual harassment and to provide the procedures for resolution, settlements, or prosecution of acts of sexual harassment towards this end, the employer or head of office. Okay, so it is the duty of them, whoever is the, the whoever is considered to be the head of the institution uh, shall take into shall be his or her responsibility to see, to see to it that there are um, policies, standards, and guidelines to prevent any uh, problem about sexual harassment. And again, on the same law, it, letter A, promulgate appropriate rules and regulation, consultation with and jointly approved by the employee, or the employer, students, or trainees through their duly designated representatives, prescribing the procedure for investigation of sexual harassment cases and administrative sanctions, therefore. So in other words, while higher educational institutions are concerned with the curriculum, they should also be concerned with issues like this that is related to student, teacher, or employer-employee relationship. So what is the duty of the employer? Again, let, uh, letter B, answer to that question is create a committee on decorum and investigation for cases on sexual harassment. The committee shall call... Uh, Conduct meetings, as the case may be, with officers and employees, teachers, instructors, professors, coaches, trainers, students or trainees to increase understanding and, uh, I cannot see the, anyway, incidents of sexual harassment. It shall process, I mean, incidents of sexual harassment. It shall also conduct investigation of alleged cases constituting sexual harassment so this is a uh, 
requirement for any higher educational institution to have a committee on decorum and investigation. We call it CODI. When I was in Holy Cross, we have this, we, uh, uh, the, the administration created a CODI and I was once a member of the CODI and we I experienced having a process one case, but it was uh, settled. Uh, and so anyway, this is very important because if there is no CODI, nobody will hear the complaints of the students or the teacher or the employees. So in the case of the educational or training institution, committee shall be composed of at least one representative from the administrator, administrator administration, the trainer, teachers, instructors, prof professors, or coaches and student trainees as the case may be. The employer or head of office, educational or training institution shall disseminate or post a copy of this act for information of all concerns. So this act public uh, the anti-sexual harassment act should be widely disseminated, should be posted in conspicuous places you know, in the institution. This, 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 be, this become part of the manual of operation of the school or of any work-related uh, environment. So as you can see, this is the Chad Memorandum Order number 26, series of 20, 2003. The subject here is enjoining the creation in every higher education institution of a committee on decorum and investigation on sexual harassment cases and implementing measures to avoid commission of sex-related offenses against students, faculty, and staff. So there is a law, there is a uh, Chad Memorandum Order for this, which uh, is part of the compliance of Republic, the Republic of Anti-Sexual Harassment Law. Okay, so what are the forms of sexual harassment? So there are different forms, no? like verbal or written, so verbal words, uh, spoken written is words also but these are written comments about clothing you know, like oh you look so sexy oh yeah personal behavior person's body sexual or sex-based jokes requesting sexual favor or repeatedly asking a person out sexual innuendos telling rumors about a person's personal or sexual life Threatening a person, sending emails or text messages of a sexual nature. I think you can understand this. Uh, uh, this uh, students nowadays or teenagers, young adults nowadays are fond of uh, calling names, you know, even with their friends. And uh, maybe because it's for them, it's some kind of endearment part, but for those who are not part of the circle of friends it may be uh, uh it, it 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 may not be acceptable you know? like if you if you just uh describe somebody uh, in a sexual manner in a sexual nature and then for physical like uh, a form of sexual harassment is assault this is you can understand this like uh, touching no yung you you can touch the the private parts of the person whoever that person it could be a male or a female impeding impending or blocking movement inappropriate touching of a person or person's clothing kissing hugging patting stroking remember that. This is unwelcome, no, unwelcome. Without the consent of the person uh, uh, whose sexual behavior is directed upon. Okay. Nonverbal, okay, this is about gestures, body movements, looking up and down a person's body, okay, looking up and down a person's body, like, uh, 
what for could be making fun or trying to find out how the size of the breast the size of the hips and and the legs okay then the derogatory gestures or facial expression of a sexual nature then following a person uh, similar to stalking then visual posters you can see uh before when there was no uh the child and women welfare code in davao we see a lot of billboards you know with sexy women on it uh, uh plunging uh, neck uh having kind of very skimpy clothing you no know, almost bare so and then there was also even a an advertisement which became a national sensation because women activists really rallied against it uh, it's from tanduai uh maybe you were not born during that time but it was i was really one of those who rallied against the, the that billboard so these are visual drawings pictures screen savers emails or text of a sexual nature sometimes uh, one time i went to a parlor and then i saw a lot of of course the the owner was there and there were several posters hanging on the walls of the parlor and i made a comment all oh, those posters were so sexy are so sexy you know they are uh, for me i'm quite embarrassed because you see i'm a woman and then the the, the owner of the salon said ay pang palami lang man ma'am sa mga lalaki nga customer so you see even women have a have a uh, even women no like women for most women because of uh, socialization that women are supposed to appear very beautiful very sexy so it becomes part of the consciousness of the women and so it somehow creates a uh, a consciousness that women are sex objects or sex symbols that can satisfy men so these are and for those women who do not like it they feel embarrassed they 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 feel uh yeah they feel embarrassed and it's important that uh you are able to express it in a very objective way because when you are able to do that you are also um helping the other person understand you know, where you are coming from and then what are the steps to be taken when sexually harassed first is we have to remain professional so when we say remain professional we have to be um how do we say we have to be professional uh, we have to observe the kind of words we we use when we confront somebody uh who's um behavior towards us is uncomfortable to us we have to be uh, mindful of our gesture we have to maintain our ethical conduct no? as young adults i believe you are already in the right uh, age to understand what is proper or improper behavior and number two be direct with the harasser uh, it doesn't mean that you will have to fight the harasser throw bad words against the harasser but it means to let him or her know that you do not like his or her behavior and that the conduct is unwanted and unwelcome and you wanted to stop immediately stop it immediately and number three go to the committee on decorum and investigation so this is very important that's why i, I included the the official and legal basis for coming up with the codi because this is the mechanism for students to really voice out without the codi no one will listen to the complaints of the student if and even the employees if ever there are sexual harassment cases that that will happen you know, in the institution 
So go to the committee on the quorum and in the CODI and explain or file the circumstances complaint. Be sure to take with you documented dates, times, and specific occurrences if you have them. So kasi kailangan din yung mga evidences. Any cases for that matter will always require evidences. So number four, when reporting the harassment, be prepared to share all the facts. Write down the important details of the incident and then your, uh, be prepared no, about your thoughts before you begin. Remember to provide who, what, when, where, and how, and any witnesses. Think about how the situation should be resolved. Okay, so again, here, uh, the, the CHED also gave a memorandum to all school. It says here, heads of all public and private higher education institution subject. Submission by all higher education institutions of reports on compliances with Republic Act number 7877. So that's it. So again, uh, when I was in Holy Cross, I am no longer connected now with Holy Cross. But when I was still in Holy Cross, uh, our program, I belong to the social work program, uh, is very active in terms of providing updates on the Office of the Student Affairs in terms of uh, sexual harassment uh, cases in the institution. Unfortunately, uh, we did not have any cases so far, no, when I was there. But uh, if you happen to know this, this is, uh, you can see this, you can Google this. There is actually a case filed by uh, a student from Ateneo. A tennis student filed sexual harassment case versus professor. So this was on October 15, 2018. So may I just say it's very uh, small no Manila, Philippines, the Ateneo de Davao University Student Council on Monday, October 15, filed a case with the university against a longtime male professor who has allegedly sexually harassed several students. Okay, Sangunian, uh, yan lang mahalaga. So there are really students no, who are uh, courageous enough to file a complaint uh, because. Uh, for so long, there are teachers you know, who sexually harass their students. Like, for instance, oh, your lipstick is so red. Oh, why are you late? Did you come from uh, a party last night and you were not able to uh, clean up your makeup? So you come here late and you still have your lipstick. So, so it kind of embarrassed the uh, female students. And then teachers touching, touching, no? especially when they are uh, like in the, for example, compute, computer laboratories where teachers are teaching their students to manipulate the computer and then coming very close to the student, almost uh, seeing the, the uh, kissing the, the, the hair of the student. So, these are already, and then students would not be aware because they think it's, it's just okay. But deep inside them, they are already feeling um, uncomfortable. Okay, so are there research-based findings on sexual harassment on hospitality interns? Uh, unfortunately, I have not found uh, any in the Philippines. Maybe I haven't searched enough, but luckily I found uh, uh, Sexual Harassment Research on Hospitality Internship. This was written by Ching Chu Xu, Hospitality Students' Understanding of Attitude Towards Sexual Harassment in the Workplace. It was written very long time ago, 2001. So this, the findings, a high percentage of students can correctly identify sexual harassment behavior. So this is uh, positive no, because probably students were made aware about uh, the different forms of sexual harassment. So they are, uh, they have a high percentage of awareness. So they can correctly identify sexual harassment behaviors. And 37 to 82% of different sexual harassment behavior was 
was found the student's hospitality workplace. So you see, uh, even if there are information or in information about anti-sexual harassment, there are still uh, victims of sexual harassment. So 37 to 82%. So, so this could be, again, in terms of um, verbal, uh, let's say, nonverbal uh, uh, gestures, not just nonverbal non behavior, uh, like for example, um, making uh, making it as a condition for giving a, a favor. So these are some examples. So there are actually research-based findings. Another one, uh, again, still on the same research author researcher, most hospitality employers do not do have specific sexual harassment policies, but employers fail to deliver and explain the policies and procedures effectively to their employees. So uh, it, it's like you are having a, uh, a manual of operation, but you just keep it inside your cabinet or drawer and it's just there, gather dust uh, instead of really uh, disseminating it to the employee, the employees and discussing about it so that they will be able to uh, take care of themselves and avoid any forms of sexual harassment. And then nearly half of them agreed that it should be included in the curriculum. Yes, and I'm glad that you're having it right now before you will have to, I don't know how you are going to place the students in their internship, but I believe this is a good uh, pre-internship uh, placement where they get to know uh, what uh, uh, sexual harassment, because this can really happen if they are not aware. And sometimes students themselves no, act in a sexual way and that they are not very conscious about their behavior. And this can be misunderstood by, for example, the manager, maybe the student is flirting, or maybe the student uh, uh, is asking some favor. And this can be taken advantage by the manager or the supervisor or even the teacher. So this is uh, the, the research. Uh, show that nearly half of them agree that it should be included in the curriculum and would consider taking sexual harassment training or education if it is provided on campus. So meaning to say it's not enough that you are given the information, but maybe there could be a workshop really because sometimes when you are confronted in the situation, you. Uh, you don't know what to do already because the 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 one who is victimized will be uh, placed in a situation that uh, she will have a different reaction. So like for example, shock, and if and then especially if there is a threat, no, uh, by the offender. So another one is by Joseph Lalopa. Uh, this was a recent research in 2020, just last year. And he had 20, 297 respondents. The majority of the 297 respondents did not experience sexual harassment. That's good news. But a sufficient number experienced sexist and sexual hostility, mostly from male managers, co-workers, and customers. So ito yung mga uh, sexual language like, hi sexy, can I date you tonight? Or, can you be my girlfriend? So things like these are, uh, if you if you feel uncomfortable, that can already be considered sexual harassment. And then another result from his research, the majority of respondents were not informed about inappropriate sexual behavior you know, they encountered during their internship. So very important, again, it is very important that uh, before placing the interns to their uh, internship 
assignments, they have to be given information about uh, anti-sexual harassment and perhaps other other uh, necessary information that can really help them situate no, or place them in a better situation when they are already in their internship uh, proper. So over half were given no training by the internship coordinator or employ employer on what to do if harassed. Uh, okay, so it is clear that more needs to be done by internship coordinators and employers to protect student interns. So, so this one is pertaining to the respond the role of the internship coordinator and of course the employer where the for the the faculty and the students are you know, are part of the institution. So there. Uh, by the way, the Republic Act 7877 has been expanded because uh, it somehow it it is limited to to the institution to to work related no uh, so in in 2019 yes uh, republic act number 1131 113313 or the safe spaces act address gender based sexual harassment on April 17, 2019, the Safe Spaces Act was signed into law with the aim of ensuring individual sense of personal space and public safety. The Safe Spaces Act addresses gender-based sexual harassment in public areas such as streets, privately owned places open to the public and public utility vehicles among others. It also extends protection even to cyberspace and provides for prohibited uh, and their corresponding penalties. So this is a safe spaces up because sexual harassment can happen anywhere, even if you are inside the uh, jeepney, inside the taxi, or even if you are walking along the streets. You know, there are um, verbal forms of sexual harassment. And then it can, it can happen not only to females, it can happen to uh, homosexuals, lesbians, gays, transgender. So uh, this is what I've said uh, earlier when I said that sexual anti-sexual harassment is also a gender issue. Now with that, uh, it has been expanded into Republic Act number 11313. Okay, so to, uh, to, to, to give more information on this, let's, let's watch a movie. This is the, the I, I'm almost ending my presentation. So I'd like you to watch a short video clip on the Safe Spaces app. I hope you can, uh, you are still there and you're still awake. Someone yes, Ms. Grace, we are. Kumahawakan. Wala kayong mapapala, dampiman sa aking labi o haplos na mga braso. Hanggang titig ng kayo sa malayo, pagkat malaki ang distansyang namamagitan sa atin. At merong itim na salamin na pumuprotekta sa akin. Pero sa mundong digital, hindi niyo ako tinatantanan. May at maya ako ipinagdadalhan ng mga pagbabanta ng pagkagahasa ng mga huwad na kahilingan, malalaswang mga larawan, mga minsaheng wala naman akong kinalaman. From bars to buses to private online messages, a law penalizing unwanted sexual advances and remarks is now in full force. 14 national government agencies and civil society organizations signed the Implementing Rules and Regulations of the Safe Spaces Act or Republic Act 11313 on October 28 at Quezon City. The law expands the definition of sexual harassment to gender-based sexual harassment that can be committed in physical or online spaces regardless of who the perpetrator is. In 2017, at least 1 in 20 women aged 15 to 49 experienced some kind of sexual violence. Of those abused, only two in five women sought help or reported the incident. 
Unlike the original anti-sexual harassment law signed in 1995, which only sees persons of authority as offenders, anyone can be tried as a criminal for acts like groping or even sexist and homophobic remarks. Signatories to the implementing rules include the Philippine National Police, the Department of Interior and Local Government, the Department of Communications and Technology, and the Commission on Human Rights. The new law creates penalties for two new crimes, gender-based sexual harassment in streets and public spaces, and online sexual harassment. Kaya kahit sa mundong digital, hindi nyo ako mahahawakan. Ang babaeng tulad ko ay kaya pa rin saktan. Nagmamarka ang mga salita at ang bawat pagbabanta. Together with the PNP Anti-Cybercrime Group, the Women and Children's Protection Center of the PNP will take the lead in enforcing the Safe Spaces Act. WCPC Chief William Macavinta says women's desks are available from city to regional police offices and reminds the public to report instances of harassment. So, dapat to isasabay ho natin sa pagkakaroon ng, ng awareness trainings yung community. Kasi napaka, napaka lak, malaking bagay sa atin na yung kapartner natin yung mismong uh, community. There are so many instances ng talagang mga actual na nakita. Yung mismong mga tao na nandun sa lugar at yung mga nakatira sa ano. May IRR na ang Safe Spaces Act o ang Bawal Pastos Law. Principal author Senator Risa Hontivero says women and LGBTQ plus members were given a chance to test the law by using it as a basis for filing cases. With high hopes, Hontivero says the law was designed to aim for both policy and culture change. Kasi nga, hindi lang policy change, hindi lang uh, law enforcement change, pati cultural change ang gusto mo uh, instigate ito. Gusto uh, so, mo na makalaya ang mga victim survivors sa uh, uh, trap ng victim blaming. Keeping all spaces safe and free from sexual violence will be a huge task for schools, local governments, and communities. But with the Bawal Bastos Law, women and the LGBTQ plus have the force of the law behind them. Michelle Abad, Rappler, Quezon City. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Um, let me go back to my uh, PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay. I have two more slides. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, so this is the last of my two slides, of course, the references. Although I have personal knowledge about anti-sexual harassment, all my knowledge are not coming from me. So I also had these references. By the way, for more information, I'd like to endure, uh, I'd like to recommend, recommend watching a film. It's entitled Citation. You can see this. It's in Netflix. It's about sexual harassment and rape. So if you have the time to, to search for this, and it's a very good film. So that's the end. Uh, thank you very much. So do All you right. have any questions? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ma'am Gray. So I would thank like you. to encourage our dear students, if you have any if questions to our third speaker for this afternoon. You may raise your questions or uh, clarification in our chat box. Go ahead, students, do not be shy. I guess we don't have any questions as of this moment, Mom Grace. So with that, yeah, it's okay. Okay, with that, thank you very much, Miss Grace Manola Castigan, for that very informative topic. Indeed, indeed, rather being informed about this sexual harassment act is very important to prevent the problem, uh, remove the taboo of silence, and of course to stop and fight against sexual harassment. And as a token of gratitude, we award this certificate of appreciation. Allow me to read the citation. 
Joji Ilagan International Schools awards this certificate of appreciation to Miss Grace Manola Castigo for imparting her knowledge and expertise as our guest speaker during senior high school virtual immersion and college practicum webinar with the topic Anti-Sexual Harassment Act to the students of the Joji Ilagan International Schools via Zoom video conferencing technology given this 29th of May 2021 signed by the Vice President for Education Development Ms. Nicole Nineha Bian Ledesma. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm of applause everyone to Ms. Grace Manolo Castigan. Thank you, thank you very much Ms. Castigan. You're welcome. Thank you also for inviting me. Okay. Now, of course, a certificate of participation will be given to students for those who have attended the webinar earlier this morning and, of course, this afternoon, plus submitting the evaluation form, which will be flashed later on. So, as of this moment, or allow me to take this moment rather to request everyone to kindly turn on your camera and let us seal it with a virtual group photo. May I request Mom Eda to do the honor. Thank you very much. Again, yes. everyone kindly turn on your camera. There you have it. Right, waiting for the others to turn on their cam. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, so let me start uh, doing the screen, the print screen, rather. Uh, so first panel, okay? Let's uh, smile for the camera. So one, two, three, smile. Wow. Okay. Um, second uh, panel, wait. <clears throat> okay, so one, two, three, smile. Right, so let's pose for, uh, let's do the one JB pose, sorry. All right, one, two, three. Okay, next panel. Okay, right, one JB pose. One, two, three. Okay, so thank you so much. That's it, Ms. Janine. Thank you, Ma'am Grace, for gracing our webinar this afternoon. Thank you, Ma'am Eda. Once again, thank you very much, Ms. Grace Manolo Castigan. All right. So to formally end our webinar today, let us hear from our very own Corporate Dean of uh, Georgia Logan International Schools, the Gypsy May B. Kasura, for her closing remarks. A wonderful day to all. We have reached the end of today's virtual immersion and practicum webinar, and I wish to thank everyone present here today. As we prepare students for the real life ahead, aside from preparing them on something that's directly related to their competencies, it is also significant for them to be prepared on relevant laws in Anti-Sexual Harassment Act, AIDS Awareness, and Work Ethics. With that, I wish to express my sincerest gratitude to our three amazing and great guest speakers today. Ms. Maria Luriza T. RN, Ms. Lisa Marie Shecker, CGSP, and Ms. Grace M. Castigon. Thank you so much for your generosity in sharing with us your valuable time, your knowledge and expertise on topics I mentioned earlier. To all our students, I hope you learned something new today. I hope that you'd find out something you want to know more about. And I hope that you have heard something that's gonna challenge you for the better and encourage you to learn something more beyond what you have learned from this webinar. 
the webinar topics are very important before industry deployment for OJT or immersion. But even if you will not be deployed at the moment due to the pandemic restrictions, learning this all are still necessary in the business world, specifically in our industry. I hope that your learning today will stay with you, will protect you in any way, and will help you succeed in the future. Finally, I want to thank the people behind this event and for doing a great job to make this virtual event successful. Of course, to our practicum coordinator and at the same time, the program head for both HM and TM programs, Ms. Eda Sam Castigon, and to our senior high school immersion coordinator, Ms. Janine Carla Galvez. Thank you for your hard work and congratulations for this wonderful success. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Stay safe and may God bless us all. There you have it. Thank you so much to our corporate dean of college. Corporate Dean, rather of the Georgia Logan International Schools, Dean Gypsy Maybe Casurao. And with that, I hope uh, to our dear students, you have taken notes of our uh, very informative topics for today. For I mean, regarding with the AIDS awareness, work ethics, and of course, the Anti-Sexual Harassment Act. Next slide, please. So there you have it, our dear students, kindly scan the QR code and answer our evaluation for today's webinar. We also have provided the link flashed on your screens. You may type it on the browser. Once again, a certificate of participation will be given to you, dear students, for those who have attended the webinar earlier this morning and, of course, this afternoon, plus uh, the submission of the evaluation form, which is flashed on your screens. I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you very much to our program head for HNTM, Ms. Edison Castigon, and of course to our supportive IT support, Sir Kenneth Poirio. Thank you, thank you so much. So that ends our senior high school virtual immersion and college practicum webinar, May 29, 2021. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye and be safe. Thank you, Sir Ken. Thank you, Mom Eta. Wow. Thank you, teachers. Thank you to all students. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, students. Let's just finish the JD, Miss Janine, before we'll end the live session. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us this afternoon's webinar.
Thank you, Miss Janine. Thank you, Sir Ken. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, students. And have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Sir Ken. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.